yeah, uh, so that happened. Um, one of the more scarier moments so far of the project, uh, but spoiler alert, things did get better. Um, I'm going to show you all the ins and outs, the ups and downs, literally, of what I've gone through so far with this project. And uh, probably answer the main question that you might have is, uh, why would you ever want to hook a circular saw to your CNC machine? So anyway, I'm going to walk through that, what inspired me to build this, and a lot of the details. So um, let's go right now. Well, of course, there's a backstory here, and I'm going to give you the short version. A friend of mine who owns a recording studio has been searching around for several years actually for some sort of acoustical treatment for the walls of his recording space. He looked at several products, including the ones that I'm showing you here. Nothing seemed to quite fit, so that's when he contacted me to find out if there was some sort of a custom wall treatment that I could provide for him. Well, it didn't take me long to realize that if I was going to make panels with a lot of long, straight cuts in there, a router bit really wasn't the right tool for the job. It was more of a job for a circular saw. Well, that little thought was the only spark of inspiration I needed to start brainstorming. <laughs> well, that and this tool that was on the clearance shelf. Instructions and safety warnings? I don't think these are going to apply. I had to take inventory to see what parts I had to modify and what parts I could just get rid of. I also had to come up with a secure way to attach this to the CNC machine. The blade guard and the bottom plate were definitely going to be in the way, so I was going to have to figure out how to get rid of those and... Uh, Avoid the warranty as soon as possible. As I visualized this saw mounted to my CNC, I also started to imagine all the other things I could do with this besides cut straight lines. I did take a quick look at this in the store before I bought it, and I noticed there were these five screws in the back that went all the way through the gear case. There were three other saws from other manufacturers there that were similar in design, but they had plastic gearboxes. This was the only one that was all metal. I also had to come up with a way to either bypass this switch or lock it in the on position. I'm sure a nice strong zip tie can take care of that. I had no intention of actually opening up the gearbox, but I needed to find out if all five of these screws were the same, and good news, they were. That means that the depth of all the holes is the same, which is going to allow me to make a set of standoffs and a mounting plate that's in a parallel plane to the gearbox. This bolt, which is now loose and wobbly, has its head inside the gearbox, so I can't just leave it rattling around and I can't really get it out of there. So here's my solution. I just shortened one of the extension nuts and secured it right in place. Oh yeah, between taking it out of the box and tearing it apart, I did manage to capture a few photos. When creating a new part that's going to be fit to an existing part, this is a great technique. I use this often. The two most important things to consider are shooting with a very long, narrow perspective and also including a ruler in the shot. In this project, I'm using inches as my unit of measure. So I was able to click on the photo of the ruler and drag it to snap to the inch dimensions of my grid. In my CAD sketch, I located all the holes, but I also went back and checked the measurements of the real thing. Altogether, I had to locate nine holes. Five of them are for the screws that go into the gearbox. The other four are for the bolts that will actually bolt the plate to the Z-axis of the CNC machine. Oh, that other thing? Yeah, that's the CAD model of the existing router mount. So in total, the parts I'm going to have to fabricate are the five standoffs, a 3 8 inch thick plate that has all nine holes in it, and five of them are counterboard from one side, and the other four are counterboard from the other side. Well, it was time to get off the computer and get out in the shop and start cutting metal. I rough cut this piece of 3 8 plate aluminum on the bandsaw. I got it close to size. I just need to square it up now before the next step, which I'm really excited about because I get to use a new tool.
Well, even though this is a pretty simple part, it's just a plate with a bunch of holes in it, my bridge port skills are pretty basic. So my new piece of equipment is going to be a big help with that. And also, there's a couple of extra challenges in here for me. I've got to flip the part over and I also have to rotate it 90 degrees because if I don't, my drills could actually hit the vice jaws. Okay, well this is the part where I get to show you the new addition to my shop. No, it's not that old 1982 bridge board. It's those little shiny cables. Do you see where they go? They're connected to those little sensor blocks and uh, those sensor blocks slide back and forth on those aluminum rails and inside the aluminum rails are some glass scales which give me readings that go to the digital readout. So I owe a big shout out to Banggood. They provided me with this digital readout along with the cables and the scales to go on the bridge board. I promised them that I would use it in a project, show it to my audience and give them some honest feedback. When I first acquired this milling machine, it didn't have a digital readout on it and I wasn't planning on getting one because I assumed that they were really expensive. But this Banggood setup is under $200, plus I've got an affiliate link and some discount codes for you guys down in the description, so check it out. Well, I'm going to put the protective cover on and get back to work. Well, that montage went by pretty quick, so the one thing I wanted to point out was that there were three drilling operations on each one of the holes. Because I have a digital readout now, it made it very easy for me to do the first two drilling operations all the way through and then go back, find the precise locations, and do the counter bores. With the mounting plate finished, I can get onto the lathe now and make the standoffs. I decided to make these out of steel instead of aluminum because they're going to be kind of thin and I wanted to make sure that they were strong enough. Based on my assumptions, I made the standoffs all the same length, and it looks like they're going to work great. Some of you might be thinking that this is overkill, but if you recall what happened at the beginning of this video, that little bit of foreshadowing, I am very glad that I put in the extra effort to make this a solid mount. As a side note here, I'd like to say that my machinist skills are at quite a beginner's level, and solving a problem like this and building this mounting plate was so enjoyable and it was a huge opportunity to learn a lot. I didn't mention this when I was showing you the CAD model, but I positioned these four holes so that I could get to the M8 cap screws around the body of the saw. And that's just another great example of why having that photo in the CAD environment is so important. Hey, it looks like my robot's excited about this new attachment. Well, it's getting late. Maybe we should wait till tomorrow. Oh, what, you want it today? You want me to put it on right now? Okay. Okay, this is the router mount that I showed you in the CAD environment, and it's mounted with four M8 bolts that go into these T-nuts. I'm going to use the same nuts and bolts, I just have to adjust them a little bit. While I'm here, I want to point out something. These T-nuts have a special feature. There's a little spring-mounted ball bearing in them that hold them in place when you're working with an extrusion that's in a vertical position. 
So one of my main goals in designing this mounting plate was the ease of changing tools to go from the router to the saw and from the saw back to the router. As I was tightening these bolts, it gave me just a little boost of confidence knowing that if something did go wrong with my testing, it wouldn't be because of this mount. All right, for all of you who've stuck around so far, you're about to see the very first G-code test that I did. And this is not the dado stack yet. Uh, this is a single blade and they're not gonna be grooves. They're actually some sideways cuts. So it's pretty cool. Check it out. The 3D carving technique was a lot of fun and I'm definitely going to experiment with that more in the future, but I really wanted to get into building that dado stack. And as you guys know, version 1 didn't work out, uh, a lot of reasons. I used brass for the spacers and it was kind of slippery and I only used four blades that were stacked together and yeah, so epic failure, right? Okay, so version 2 involves uh, a steel arbor and five blades. And it's uh, very successful so far, and I'm actually working right now on a really, really cool project. So stay tuned, and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>